you have a vent that has low airflow? In today's video, I'm gonna give you 10 reasons why the airflow might be low. Some of these things you might be able to look at or even address yourself without having to call a pro. So let's dive into it. 10 reasons, low airflow out of a vent. The first one is the installation of the ductwork. And this might be the most common one we've seen. A lot of ductwork when it's installed, either it's not installed correctly or they're just kind of moving quick and maybe they're kinking the ductwork, especially like with flex duct, you don't want any sharp bends. Really, the no matter what the material is, the straighter that duct, the better, the less turns, the less kinks and so on, the better that air can flow through there. So a lot of times we will see poor installation of some type. I've even seen ducks come loose. They've fallen off of the boot. They're laying on the ground in the crawl space. It's literally come loose. And you can check that yourself by just popping open your vent and look down in there. And if you see ground, if you see your crawl space, then you know that duct is no longer connected. But just overall poor installation, that's something we see a lot. That's something that you might be able to, if nothing else, visually inspect your ductwork and see, is there anything jumping out of me? Is there something that before I even have to call a professional, I can see what the problem is before the pro comes in and tries to sell me something, right? I'll say this before moving forward. If you stick around to the last one, it may be a surprise for some HVAC technicians. Number two is the sizing of the ductwork. Let me put it to you this way. A large room that has the same size duct as a small room, that can sometimes play a role on whether or not you feel like that room is getting enough air, enough airflow, enough CFMs to that space. So sizing does matter. I've heard other content creators actually argue this, but size does matter. And when it comes to duct work, there is a way to obviously undersize it, but there is ways to oversize it and so on. It needs to be sized so that everything is balanced properly. And aside from knowing, hey, this room is bigger than this one, it should maybe get more airflow. You may need to get a pro in there with a duculator and actually do a manual D of some type to make Make sure that that system is sized correctly for the layout of your home. Number three, maybe that ductwork has become compromised in some way. Again, I pointed out how when they're installed, if it's not installed correctly, it can become compromised. The flex duct is being kinked. I've seen other ways ducts become compromised. Things like critters, things like other technicians or professionals working in that space. I remember years ago, I had to go into a home and they actually had hard duct ran throughout the entire home and a cable technician who was installing, you know, their television cable had actually crushed one of the ducts. And so that's what I mean by compromise. Either it's crushed, it's compromised, maybe it's got a hole in it, but it's compromised in some way. And again, this is something that most homeowners, if they're willing to get their hands dirty, could at least visually check, hey, that doesn't look right right there. And before I get to number four, I'd like to do more videos like this one, helping folks with a HVAC, but I need your help by clicking that like button. Number four is poor layout of the ductwork, right? We've already talked about the installation, the sizing, but sometimes just simply the layout of that ductwork may not be correct. Point being, if a room is very far from the heating and air system, sometimes installation technicians need to understand that the further away that gets, the more static that ductwork could be getting and the less airflow that part of the house could be getting. And so you gotta keep all that in mind when you're actually laying out the ductwork. Vents that are closer to the HVAC system versus ones that are further away, that plays a role in all of that. You've got to lay it out correctly so that you're getting the proper amount of airflow. Ductwork that's sized properly, installed properly, and laid out properly, the even the rooms that are the furthest away from the HVAC system should blow maybe not exactly the same perfect CFM, but definitely no noticeable differences within you know a low percentage of one another to where you would not know which one is actually physically closer to the HVAC system. Number five is a big one, leaky ductwork. We see ductwork all the time that's leaky on the return side, and we see ducts that are leaky on the 
supply side. All of that plays a role because just simply ductwork that's not sealed properly can play a big role in whether or not that vent is actually good in good airflow. And one good way I want to highlight to seal that ductwork is the company that has actually sponsored this video. So thank you to AeroSeal. What they can do is actually seal that ductwork from the inside. They have a way of sealing that ductwork, making it more efficient, making airflow better without having to get in there and tear open walls or replace ductwork. I'll put a link down in the description of this video to their website. If they don't have a contractor in your area that provides that service, they will help you find one. We've heard amazing results from customers saying that they got AeroSeal installed, better airflow, better efficient running, heating and air system, and lower utility bills just from sealing that ductwork with AeroSeal. Moving on to number six, something could be dirty. So a dirty coil could obviously restrict airflow through that system. But other things like a dirty fan wheel, a lot of companies, I've actually went behind other heating and air technicians where they did a tune up or some sort of maintenance and they kind of were there, you know, they kicked the tires for a minute and they never actually took the time to get up in there and even see if the fan wheel is clean or not. So dirty coil, dirty fan wheel. And then the last one is obviously dirty duct work. Having those ducts clean periodically may play a big role in the airflow into your home. And just know there are a lot of scammers out there. There are companies that offer duct cleaning and they're not all created equal. I would say find someone reputable, someone that's willing to run a camera and show you the before and after, someone that's got references. Don't just hire some person off of Facebook that is offering a, a cheap service. You want to actually get a good, reputable company to get in there and clean those ducts. Number seven would be an issue with your heating and air system. So it's not just dirty, but maybe there actually is a problem with it. Maybe either something has failed or something wasn't commissioned correctly from the installation. I've actually been to homes where where, you know, I pulled out the manual and they'll say, I've, I've had other companies here trying to fix the same issue and I've never seen any of them crack open the manual and really get down in the nitty gritty. And sometimes I find out that just simply moving the fan speed tap on the motor or incorrectly having all the airflow through that system could play a role in all of this. But just simply a problem with the heating and air system, obviously most of those issues, you will have to get a pro involved depending on what the problem is, but getting that fixed may play a big role in whether or not that vent has low airflow moving forward. If you're getting any value out of this, if you wouldn't mind, click that subscribe button. We've got more content coming, more secrets in the HVAC industry, and I'd appreciate it. Number eight is an obstruction of some type. Now, this may seem pretty self-explanatory and common sense at the end of the day, but obstructions, I've seen all kinds of scenarios. I saw one time where a piece of insulation had actually gotten up on the evaporator coil itself. So obviously that's gonna restrict air being pulled through that system. I had one system one time where the sides of the insulation on the inside the cabinet of the air handler were separating and you would not know it. The, the fan wheel was turning and it would pull them and it would stop. It would restrict that air going through there. You wouldn't know it because they would go back into place once the system was off or if you pulled the cover off. And once I started testing all the ductwork and doing a few different measurements, I started realizing there's an issue in here. And I literally set up a camera inside of there with my phone, put the cover back on, and I was able to watch it real time and see that that insulation was restricting that air. But of course, if you're having an obstruction of just one duct, if only one vent is having an issue with airflow, you may be able to literally take your camera, take your phone, stick it down in the ductwork and kind of shine around in there and take a couple pictures, and you may see an obstruction that way. We actually saw a critter. I'm not gonna say what type of animal, but we saw a critter one time inside of one and it was a pretty sizable critter and it had passed away, but it was restricting air coming through that one duct. Number nine could be the vent itself. So a lot of the registers or vents will have dampers on them themselves or some sort of way to throw that air. A vent itself could be the obstruction or the problem. So make sure that's good and clear. Maybe even pull the vent if you have that ability just to pull the register off and see if the airflow changes at all. See if it hits you in the face and, and you're getting good airflow to that point. We may need to look at a different register 
but definitely make sure those dampers are open and it's not the problem. And finally, number 10 is the one I told you that some technicians may even be surprised by. And the reason I say that is when I talk to some technicians and they don't even own a manometer, for example, and I know they're not checking static pressure on that ductwork often enough or at all, then I know that that could be the problem. And so unfortunately, again, this may be one that a pro would need to take care of, but you would know as the homeowner whether or not, they, if they're not pulling out a manometer or a static meter of some type, you'll know that they're not actually checking it. And that is checking the ductwork with tools, you know, doing a proper measurement of static pressure on that system. I'm going to do a video soon where I'm going to show you that. I'm going to literally take a manometer and show you what that looks like and how they can test that. Most homeowners are not going to go out and buy, you know, an expensive manometer just to see if the static pressure is correct in their ductwork. But most HVAC technicians, that should be a tool that they have on their truck. Unfortunately, a lot don't. And you as the homeowner can ask them, hey, I, I want to know what's my static. I know that it should be under 0.5 or 0.6, whatever's on that label. A lot of air handlers or furnaces will actually put on the label what that static should be. But if it's not there, it'll be somewhere. It'll be in the service manual or somewhere like that. And keeping that static pressure as low as possible is something that a lot of HVAC technicians themselves will overlook. So what are your thoughts? Did I miss one? Have you dealt with low airflow out of a vent and it ended up being something I didn't cover in this video? I'd love to hear about that down in the comment section. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about HVAC systems that have continuous problems. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.